Thank you for joining this presentation, Financial Aid 101. This discussion, PowerPoint, and included resources are designed to help you navigate the financial aid application process. My name is Sonia Mann McFarlane. I am a team member with Pennsylvania School Services, a division of FIA. My service area includes schools located in Berks, Chester, Lancaster, and Lebanon counties. After this presentation, if you should have questions, please email me at smannmcf at fia.org. I will respond to your questions within 24 to 48 hours. Along with this PowerPoint presentation, there are two links embedded for you to use as resources. We have our student aid guide, and these five steps to financial aid is elaborated at the link below. When we talk about financial aid, um, tonight I will discuss looking for free money, also the importance of knowing school specific deadlines, filling out the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA, how to compare your financial aid offers that you will receive from the schools where you are admitted. And more importantly, we want you to explore that you have the money that you need for your financial future. When we talk about financial aid, we will talk about gift aid, which could be in the form of grants and scholarships, um, self-help money, um, money that you receive from working, your savings, um, maybe some tuition accounts, such as 529 programs, and of course, um, loans. These sources are available to help you pay for your educational costs. The federal government, state government, schools and colleges and scholarships are your primary funding sources for financial aid. When we look at the federal government, we want to look for free money first. This can come in the form of grants, scholarships, um, as well as other sources of free money. When we talk about scholarships, I uh, often refer to fastweb.com. There are several other searches that you can consider. And in fact, we want you to first look at your local options. There will be several scholarship opportunities posted at your high school's website. Here at FastWeb, you are now competing with other students across the nation, but FastWeb does house over a million scholarships in their database. Once you complete your profile, you will begin to receive scholarship um, information about scholarships that you may be interested in applying. FastWeb.com. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the federal and state aid programs. Within the federal government, there is the Pell Grant. The maximum award amount for the um, academic year is $6,345. Um, the Pell Grant does go to the more financially needy families, uh, having an EFC of less than and not more than $5,711. And we'll talk a little bit more about the EFC or the expected family contribution later in the presentation. Also with the federal government, there are some campus-based aid programs. Uh, these funds go directly to the school campus and are administered by the financial aid office. Within campus-based aid programs, there is an FSEOG grant, a Federal Supplemental Education Opportunities Grant, and that award amount can be up to $4,000. Federal Work Study is also a federal program that's administered by school campuses where a student can actually work and receive uh, wages while they are in school. You have to be enrolled at least half time to be eligible or to be considered uh, for the federal programs. Within Pennsylvania, we do have a state grant program that is administered by FIA. The full-time award amount is $4,525 this year. And also, there's a half-time award that you could be eligible for. 
we have a, just a few of reciprocal states where you can take some of your state grant funding to these states um, if you are awarded a grant through the Pennsylvania State Grant Program. Those states are Delaware, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, Ohio, Vermont, and West Virginia. So again, you must be at least have time to be eligible for the state aid program. Also within the state aid uh, program category, FIA sponsors other state special programs. We call these special programs. We have um, state work study program, blind or deaf beneficiary grant, um, the EAP program, which helps students that are interested in serving in the National Guard six years after they graduate. There's also a Pennsylvania Military Family Education Program. This is new this year, and it allows current National Guard members to transfer their educational benefits to family members. The Chafee Education Training Grant is co-administered by FIA and the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services, and this is a grant set aside for students that are aging out of foster care. In addition to Chafee, of funding, there is new this year the Foster Education Tuition Waiver, where um, students aging out of foster care could receive a waiver to offset their fees for tuition and other allowed fees on a campus. These are some of the other special programs that we administer. Um, the PEG program helps students who lost a family member that died in, in the line of active duty. The PATH program is a potentially dollar-for-dollar dollar scholarship matching program, and each county has a PATH partner. You can find out who those are on our website. So if you did get the PATH program and the scholarship from our PATH partner, again, those funds have the potential for being matched dollar-for-dollar. Dollar. The uh, Ready to Succeed program is a scholarship opportunity for families that may be um, approaching being financially ineligible due to high income in their household. However, the Ready to Succeed program helps high academic achieving um, students with 24 college credits and a GPA of 3.25. If you feel like you have those credentials, uh, please make yourself known at the financial aid office at your college. Again, this is this uh, program does not have an application housed on our website, so you would have to talk to the financial aid office at your school. I'm going to go back up to the Pennsylvania Targeted Industry Program because unlike the state grant and other special programs that require students be enrolled in a two- or four-year program, the PA TIP program helps students that are seeking um, employment training or seeking certification in a program that is at least 10 weeks long, but less than two years. And this program um, does provide similar state grant funding. We have several career clusters noted under this program, which you, where you could um, receive possible funding to help you. And this information on all of the special programs is detailed in our student aid guide, as well as on our website at via.org. So when all sources of free money have been exhausted, some students do have to resort to uh, loans. So we first want to talk about the federal loan program. So the federal direct student loan program is available to all students regardless of household income. The requirement is, of course, a student must be a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen. These loans would be in the name of the student. There is no application and no credit check. The loans would be, again, in the name of the student, and the student would be required to pay those loan funds back. A student can, however, defer paying on the loan while they are in school and also ask and request an additional deferment period up to six months after they graduate from school or reduce to um, half time or disenroll. There are several flexible repayment options with the student loan program. Um, the funds will be awarded or offered as subsidized funding. 
or unsubsidized funding. And this would be based on the financial need and the calculations from the free application for federal student aid. This slide shows you the limits, <clears throat> excuse me, that a student would be subjected to if they participate in the federal student loan program. As you can see, a freshman can borrow up to 5,500 there um, first year in school. And subsequently, you can see how the loan funds do increase depending on the uh, classification of a student. There are also funds for those students deemed as um, independent or um, have a parent that maybe did not qualify for the federal loan program. So the limits for a dependent student, a student still living at home, is $31,000 for their entire four-year program. The limit for an independent student or for a dependent student who whose parents could not qualify for the federal loan program is 57,000. In both categories, dependent student and independent student, the maximum of mountain subsidized funding is capped at $23,000. And as you can see, if your student um, planning on going on to graduate school, there are additional funds to help you in as unsubsidized funding. There is a loan program for parents that um, decide to help their students um, pay for school or a parent uh, with dependent children or graduate level students. A parent can borrow up to the entire, entire cost of the education for the student. <clears throat> there is an application and there is a credit check. It's also lenient, uh, I consider it a lenient credit check. And you can have a cosigner as a parent if you decide to do so. If you are denied, again, your student or your child would be offered an additional 4000 in unsubsidized loans. You must complete the FAFSA, or I should say the student must complete the free application for federal student aid for you to be considered um, as a parent that can assist with borrowing for your, for your child. There are several benefits for paying the interest on these loans for both the students and the parents. You have to contact your loan servicer to request that statement. It does significantly decrease the amount of your student loan payments after a deferment period. So now let's talk a little bit about um, deadlines across college campuses. We have application um, deadlines for admissions. Those will be rolling out for seniors, I guess, early fall. And then after October 1, you will see applications for your financial aid or your free application for federal student aid. The FAFSA will be available on October 1 for all high school seniors, and it should not be completed or submitted prior to that date. However, schools will publish a date on their website by which they want to have received your FAFSA or your free application for federal student aid. It is important that you adhere to these deadlines. Some of the funding is administered on a first come first serve basis. With the Pennsylvania State Grant Program, we have two deadlines that you have to keep in mind. Um, May 1st is the uh, first deadline for students that are pursuing a college transferable um, degree or, or entering into a college transferable program or if they are going into a four-year school. If you are enrolling at a community college or business trade or tech school or a hospital school of nursing, you have until August 1 or if you are enrolling into a non-transferable college degree program. May 1st and August 1st are the two deadlines you need to keep in mind for the Pennsylvania State Grant Program. So now let's talk about the free application for federal student aid. This application determines federal and state aid eligibility. It is required by most schools, again, the application will be available on October 1. You can do this application online. You can also download the My Student Aid app 
and actually complete the application on your mobile device. There is also a PDF that can be obtained by calling the student aid or contacting the student aid.gov helpline. So again, the FAFSA is primarily used to determine uh, your eligibility for student for federal and state aid. It must be completed each year. Um, the online application is very fast, it's secure. It has a lot of skip logic built into the application. And also, if you have an error on a page, the online application will not allow you to proceed until you corrected that. So the online um, application, I feel, is the best way to complete the FAFSA. So this um, is telling us whose information will be required on the FAFSA. So if your child is actually living with um, their parents, their biological parents, then their information would be used on the FAFSA. If the parents are divorced or separated, we would use the household income to include a parent, maybe a step parent, where the child lives more than 50% of the time. We do not include the income information for foster parents, legal guardians, grandparents or anyone else that the student may be living with. Here's a list of some of the things you will need to have access to to complete the um, free application for federal student aid. And although a lot of the information is actually transferred through a link from the IRS, you will need to have access to your W-2s, your tax returns, um, some information about your uh, current checking and savings uh, account information the day of completing the FAFSA. If you have any investments, you would need to have that information with you as well. More importantly, to get this um, application started, the student and just one parent will need to have a federal student aid account created. And you can do this at the federal student aid website or we call that an FSA ID. Within the um, FAFSA application, a student can, at each um, application sitting, send his free application for federal student aid or send the fossil information up to 10 colleges at a time. You do not have to have been admitted at these schools. You simply want to send your financial aid information, and for those schools where you are admitted, they will, in return, send you a financial aid offer. If you decide that you want to send your free application for federal student aid to an additional schools outside of the first 10, you can log into your application after it has been completed, have been, has been completed, sorry, and uh, delete the schools that you have in the FAFSA and add any additional schools, sign the application again and resubmit it. The students applying um, for their free application for federal student aid, again, will need an FSA ID. You can do this ahead of time if you like, but the FSA ID is simply a username and password that you create it is linked to a unique email account for the student and cell phone number. And also it is linked to a unique email account and cell phone number for one parent. The FSA ID is required to enter the application and also allows you to sign the application. Within the federal um, student aid, the FAFSA application, you will have the option of transferring your federal tax information. This screen will display um, for most parents that are actually eligible and students that are eligible to use the IRS data retrieval tool. And this um, slide I'm putting up because the information that you complete this slide with has to match the cover page on your 1040 form. So make sure that you identically input in your name, using your initials, check your social security numbers, and spell out uh, the street avenue to match that of your 1044. 
Again, the FSAID, FSAID account is an individual account assigned to the student and just one parent. The FSAID also allows you to access other federal student um, aid related websites such as the student loan um, process. If you decide to participate in the federal student loan program or the parent decides to take out a parent loan, they would use the FSAID to sign the master promissory notes. If you forget your username or your password, these can be retrieved if you um, forget those uh, simply by, they will email you a link to reset both. The free application for federal student aid at the confirmation page, there is a link to the state grant program. And this is actually the fastest and most efficient way to complete the state grant program. On your confirmation page, if you simply click that link, it will direct you to a almost completed uh, state grant form, and you, if you have used your FSAID to sign the FAFSA, you can also e-sign the state grant application. If for some reason you forget to use the link, FIA will provide uh, a link to the student via email, and you can also log into account access to access the state grant form. Here are some helpful tips to um, help you with the completion of your FAFSA. Please make sure that you accurately record and note your Social Security number. It is the one error, unfortunately, that cannot be <clears throat> corrected. You actually have to begin the application process over again. The gender question is optional, but it's linked to the selective services process um, that is um, reviewed as part of the FAFSA information. Make sure that you do not mix student questions against the parent uh, questions. So you have to pay close attention as to what section you are completing within the free application for federal student aid. There's a student section, and then the application will go to a parent section, and then it will go back to a student um, section. So just pay close attention to know which questions are being posed to either the student or the parent. And of course, make sure you have access to your 1040 and your W-2s because there are actually three questions within the FAFSA that do not transfer um, the information directly from the IRS or from your tax form. So you will need to have your W-2s for that relevant tax year to complete the FAFSA. There are other forms that you may have to complete. Um, some schools require the college scholarship service or the CSS profile. Some schools also have additional forms. All this information is published on schools' website. They will note what forms and documentation you have to submit to be considered having completed their financial aid application process. So after you complete the FAFSA, this is what you can expect to um, happen. Immediately on the confirmation page, your um, expected family contribution is calculated or your EFC value. We talked about this very uh, early in the program. So you will know then what your EFC value is. The schools that you have sent your FAFSA to will subtract your EFC value from their cost of attending to decide or to calculate if you have any financial need. Those students with financial need will receive financial offers from those schools where they are admitted. So how is your EFC calculated? Um, the EFC calculation is primarily uh, looking at the income of the household, the student and parent income, but it also considers um, tax and untaxed income differences in the two. They will ask about assets for some families, number of members in the household, and also it looks at the age of the oldest parent, uh, realizing that that family may be actually 
actually be preparing for retirement. So they will be a question asked to some families about their assets. And when you get that question, um, we want you to know that you do not report the value of your home, personal property, qualify retirement accounts, life insurance. Um, the values of those are not included as an asset. And if you are not sure on how to answer any of the questions within the FAFSA, just click on the little question mark in that box, and they will uh, provide some additional narrative there to help you with that. There are some asset protection allowances. Um, only 6% is actually looked at of an asset when the asset is listed under a parent versus 20% when that asset is listed under a student. So we uh, strongly suggest um, that your 529 accounts for all students or all your children are actually reported as a parent asset. Those uh, families wondering how a student's income may be reflected within the EFC calculation, just know that a student can earn up to $6,970 before any of that income is taken into consideration with the EFC calculation. And even at that point, only 50% of that value over $6,970 actually impacts the EFC. Again, the EFC will look at how many uh, children in that household may be attending college that coming year. After you file your FAFSA, within two to three days, the student, and I must stress the student, gets all of these uh, emails sent directly to them. So the student will get um, an email confirming that the FAFSA has now been processed. Actually, the student gets an email immediately when you hit the submit button. That email says, thank you for submitting your FAFSA. Three days later, the students get another email saying that the FAFSA has now been processed. Please know at that time that FIA also has your information to begin um, an investigation of your eligibility for the state grant program as do all of the schools that you listed on the free application federal student aid. It is important, however, that if you have any changes in your situation, knowing that the FAFSA uses tax data that is two years old for some families, depending on um, their current situation, they may have had a reduction of income, there could be a divorce or separation issue within um, the household. So if the information that you downloaded from the IRS does not reflect your current financial situation, you should be in conversation with the schools so that you can report these changes to them. Schools do have the authority to um, review your um, information that you can document and or change your EFC day or your expected family contribution amount. So when you begin um, receiving your student aid offer, so now you've done the FAFSA and you know, two or three months later, you start getting financial aid offers from the schools where you have been accepted. Please know that there is no required format for financial aid office, uh, offers that are coming from schools. Also know that some schools automatically include federal loans in their financial aid office and some do not. If you receive, receive a scholarship from a school, please make sure that you know what the requirements are for maintaining that scholarship. Uh, more importantly, if there's something within the financial aid offer that you do not understand, please contact the school. The bottom line is you want to know what are your out-of-pocket costs to attend that particular school. So you may begin to receive some information that kind of looks like this, um, noting that the EFC value will not change from school to school. It is simply a calculation that schools use to determine if you have financial need. And as you can see in this slide here, this family with a $3,000 EFC had financial need at all 
three schools that, that posted um, here on the slide. What you want to make sure that you're aware of are the loans, how much they are asking you to borrow, what kind of loans those are, um, how much free money they may be offering, but more importantly, you need to know what the gap is. This is your bill. This is the amount that you have to satisfy before you are able to register for classes at that campus. So we want to make sure that you have chosen an affordable choice for school. Please know that your financial aid office probably offer is a reflection of what your budget may look like for four and a half to six years, depending on how long it takes you to graduate from your program. Do you understand your loan options and their limitations? Make sure you are, are fully aware of how borrowing will impact your future beyond school. Some students may choose um, private or alternative loans. And these are loans that would come from any other vendor or any vendor other than the uh, federal government. The bottom line with the private loans, you want to make sure that you are aware of what those are. Read the fine print, as we say. But SIA has entered uh, into the educational loan um, business again, and we are proud to offer Pennsylvania PA forward student loans for students and parents. These loans do not have a fee and have very low interest rates. Please visit our website, fia.org forward slash PA forward to find out more about these loan products. <clears throat> so we want to make sure that you are a smart consumer. Um, there are some tools that you can use now to help you with your research around what schools might actually cost for you. Um, each school has embedded on their website a net price calculator. You can use these um, calculators to get an estimate of what the total cost of attendance might be, room and board, uh, and again, what your uh, expected contribution might be from each individual school. However, some net price calculators may or may not include scholarships. So again, if you have questions, please contact each individual school to discuss your um, output from using their net price calculator. At FIA, we have a, a very interesting tool that helpful tool actually it's called My Smart Borrowing. Students and families seem to really like this um, tool because it helps them to understand how and compare several schools at once um, related to how much they may have to borrow and how much that borrowing may impact their financial future after starting work and beginning to repay some of their student loans. MySmartBorrowing.org is helpful. It can be downloaded on your smartphones and of course you can use it, um, access it from any uh, computer or pad. So in wrapping up, I just have some final thoughts I'd like to go over um, with you. So if you are a senior and you are preparing for um, the FAFSA, we want you to go ahead and get your FSA ID for yourself. Encourage your, your parent, just one parent needs to have an FSA ID. Store this information somewhere secure. But again, if you forget the credentials, they will let you access that once you try to uh, enter or um, start your FAFSA. Continue to visit college's websites to receive information. Talk as a family about what's affordable. Continue to use those net price calculators. And more importantly, continue to explore scholarship opportunities. Also, we want you to graduate on time. This is a helpful way to make sure that you are um, making the best use of all your financial aid. Students need to take a minimum of 15 credits per semester to graduate on time. Research your major and make sure it is a right fit for you. And for some high school students, you know you can actually earn some college credits while you're in high school. Uh, some of you are taking advantage of dual enrollment, AP classes. Have those discussions at your prospective college campuses to see if those credits will transfer. 
the two plus two or the three plus two um, strategy is an excellent way to save funds. <clears throat> some uh, students decide to stay at home, begin taking some of their transferable credits at a community college, and this does uh, save the family quite a bit of money. Here I have listed several resources uh, again for you that you can access to help you continue to explore and prepare for the financial aid application process and beyond. You can find FIA, Pennsylvania School Services, of course, on all of the social media outlets. And again, my name is Sonia May McFarlane. I am your Pennsylvania School Services Access Partner. And any questions that you have after this presentation, please email them to me at this email address noted below. And I promise to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Thank you for attending.